Cryogenic winter is one of the hardest mods you can try to play, with temperatures reaching up to negative 200 degrees in the wintertime, and I decided to try to play for two full years without dying. I should also note that I will not be doing any type of farming on this playthrough. But on to the part you actually came to see. I started day one just like everybody else, looking for food inside the house that I spawned in, and warm clothing was going to be my main concern. After checking downstairs, I went upstairs and we found warm clothing and a backpack right off the bat. I would still be on the lookout for more warm clothing as we didn't have the best insulation. It was time to move on, and to avoid the horde, we decided to go across the street and loot a different house instead of hitting up the house right next to us. I did decide to go and check the garage first, as I really did need a weapon, and garages normally had metal pipes and other useful things like that. Moving out the back, I did find a black digital watch on a body, which really comes in handy when you're playing Cryogenic Winter. Taking my chances with the horde coming behind me, I decided to check one more garage and get a hand torch because being able to see at night when it's pitch black is major. You will come to notice, I take a lot more risks than I should in this series, but that's what makes it exciting. I made some distance between me and the horde of zombies, not a lot, but some. Found some food and found some padded pants and a lumberjack shirt inside of this house, which was amazing because my insulation was not high enough to stop myself from getting hypothermic. My only goal at this point was to find somewhere safe away from the zombies so that I could rest up for the day and stop running around at night because running around in pitch black is extremely dangerous. I will admit I did a lot of pointless running around on the first day and I decided to take a little bit of a break in this house, eat some food and kill the few zombies that were chasing me. Now the first day I didn't really sleep so we just kept going through the night. Neither shed behind this building had anything useful in it, but I did have a close call. After striking out, we moved over to the next house to grab some food, just in case we ended up having to run into the woods to pitch a horde. Sure enough, there was 8 to 10 zombies in the front of the house, and I still can't see because it's 2.30 in the morning. I raided the kitchen for the little bit of food it had, and I had to be quick because the horde was directly on my tail. It's always good to check for magazines when you're in a house, because they always come in handy later on, but this almost got me killed. Upon entering the next house, I ended up getting a pipe bomb and some vitamins, two major things that I needed, mainly because I didn't sleep last night, and we were going to have a horde of zombies in our near future. At this point, my next major concern was getting a vehicle, as it was really cold out, so the heater from the car would definitely keep us warm if we ended up hitting hypothermia. No luck in the car department, but we did have luck in the zombie department. We started to get a pretty decent amount of zombies following us. Hopping a fence is always risky, but sometimes you just gotta risk it for the biscuit. Checking our moodles, it looked like we were about to hit hypothermia, so it was time to find a house and take a little bit of a break, because negative 20 is better than negative 70, and we ended up finding a beanie, which really helps. Even with full insulation, you still have to be careful as full insulation does not protect you in negative 70 weather. This garage happened to have a couple of axes, a tactical axe, and a regular fire axe, which happened to be the main weapons that I'd be using at the beginning of this playthrough. With how tired a character was getting, it was time to find somewhere to sleep for the night. We found this big hiking bag, and then found our spot to sleep for the night. That was the end of day two. With day three commencing, we really wanted to find a vehicle. We had plenty of food, we had weapons, and we had water. So the only goal today was to find a vehicle and get to our build spot. Anybody who's ever played on Apocalypse settings knows that dodging zombies and finding a car in the low population of vehicles that are on the map can be a difficult task. 
after multiple locked cars, cars without gasoline, cars without keys, and a couple of near-death experiences, I finally found my winner. That winner also happened to have a handgun inside the vehicle. Who knew Gigamart strapped their employees? With our vehicle starting up on the very first try, it was off to our build spot. The build spot happened to be overrun with a lot of zombies, probably in the 200 range. This is where our pipe bomb came in handy. In my 700 hours of playtime, I've never used a pipe bomb, so they're new to me. Same thing with Molotovs. But right now, we're going to focus on using a pipe bomb now that we have them all gathered together. With an underwhelming explosion, I decided to use the fire to kill the zombies, as it's a lot quicker than trying to take all the zombies out one by one with axe skill level 0. I am trying to be very careful with the fire as I have fire spread on and I don't really want to take out my entire town or my base house for that matter. It took about two in-game hours to kill all the zombies with the fire, but it was well worth it to save a lot of time. If you guys end up liking this series, go ahead and drop a sub or even a comment to see if there's anything I can do better. After killing the last few stragglers, we decided to go inside, organize our loot, and end day 3 there, as we made the progress that we really wanted to today. So far, we're 3 days in, and I think we've made some pretty good progress. We have food, we have a roof over our head, and we have a vehicle. Finding a padded jacket is huge, because cryogenic winter gets extremely cold, and we have 2 of them in our house. This is where we would end day 3. Four days in, I thought it was time to start leveling on my axe skill so that I could survive in case I ran into a horde of zombies. So I spent this day just leveling up my axe skill as that was the main weapon I was going to use for a while. During the process of leveling up my axe skill, I did find a shotgun on a cop zombie, which definitely came in handy later on, but I decided to throw it in the base just for now as today was all about leveling up my axe. It was getting pretty late at this point, and we got level 2 axe skill, so I decided to call it a day, go inside, patch my clothing up, and sleep. That was all I did on day 4. At this point on day 5, I decided I want to get some defenses up and clear out some nearby zombies, so I started putting up a log wall, and I got rid of a few zombies in the nearby area. Luckily, we have a padded jacket and padded pants, otherwise the negative 60 degree weather would definitely have me worried right now about not having a heat source. With the area finally secure from all the little zombies in the area, I decided to put up the log palisade so I'd have a more secure front entrance for when I finally got some rain collectors up. It took most of the day, but we got some defenses up. Day 6 would be a food run, as I was getting pretty low on food back at the base, and with the fog, things did not go as planned. We did get a little bit of food, but not as much as I was hoping for. This right here is why you need to flash doors before opening, which is where you open the door and close it really quickly, just to see if there's anyone on the other side, and I need to get better at that. We did find an alcoholic's best friend though, bourbon. Bourbon in Project Zomboid helps out in many ways, especially with it being such high calories. Not only that, you can make molotovs, you can disinfect rags, and this is where things started to take a turn for the worse. I was gathering some food in the house nearby, and I almost ended my playthrough right here. Quickly realizing that going into a closet with no other exit is not a good idea, I got out of there. Once we start reaching half a dozen zombies and more, I tend to, to get out a lot out of there. No need to take the extra risk. After ditching the massive horde of zombies that I had acquired, I found a cop on the ground that I had killed earlier, and he had shotgun shells, which was nice because I really needed it for when I go to level up my shooting skill. I wanted to get back to base before it got too late, so I ended the search here with a decent amount of food piled up and some shotgun shells. Not much happened on day 7. We spent the day clearing out the zombies in the area just to stay safe, make sure our defenses stayed up, and did some sit-ups for our fitness, as we had the unfit trait, so we needed to get that up so that we could sprint longer. 
day eight started off by reading a metalworking book as I knew I was eventually going to want to put metal fences up around my base. Because of the setups we did yesterday, we had exercise fatigue and I didn't want to go too far from the base as I didn't want to take the risk of dying, not being able to kill a few zombies. After a lot of monotonous killing of the zombies, we decided to barricade the windows, go inside and read, and rest up for the day, just so that we can get out there and do some real work. Only sleeping for about an hour, we realized that we were getting too cold to sleep at night, so it was time to go out and find an antique oven to warm our house up. On day 9, things didn't get rolling until super late in the day as my guy was tired and I came pretty close to dying. 8 o'clock rolls around and we're finally on our way. I decided to head up to a town called Rabbit Cache. It's a modded map, but it's a really good addition to any playthrough. Entering a new area is always dangerous, especially when it's at max zombie count as we are 9 days in and on Apocalypse. I was not off to a good start as I triggered a truck alarm right off the bat, but I did find a really cool car that I wanted to come back for later. With nighttime approaching, I headed straight into the center of Rabbit Cache to hopefully find an antique oven and a little bit of food. Realizing that there were too many zombies for me to take on with my axe, I gathered up the zombies in the area, dragged them away just so that I didn't have to deal with them as a Molotov in this area could be very deadly. If you're wondering where the flare came from, it's from a mod called Authentic Z. It adds flares, water bottles, all kinds of new clothing and backpacks. Once I created some breathing room, we headed inside to check the general store for some food. And we only found a chocolate bar, but we did see an antique oven that we could take with us. I headed out the back, made a mad dash through the forest, trying to get back to the house that I had parked the car. Of course, on the way back, being almost maximum desertion, being overweight, happened to run into some zombies because nothing can ever go smoothly. After ditching my little friends, I rested up, headed to the car, and we were finally out of here. It really didn't take too long to get back to base, but we were finally able to set up our oven. With the oven being set up, I wanted to fill it up, that way I wouldn't have to worry about any heat for the next couple of days. I took a nap since our sleep schedule was messed up. I only let myself sleep for a couple of hours. That way I could actually get more done today. After gathering some of the planks up off the ground that I had sawed up because I was too lazy to bring them inside, it was time to start making my outer fence. I decided to go with the fence instead of a log wall as I wanted to be able to kill zombies and see over it. Doing this would help me level up my carpentry so I could get some rain barrels made. That way I would get some water coming in as the water would eventually go bad. Now that I have level 3 axe skill, I'm starting to frequently hit zombies and one hit kill them. This comes in handy especially with bigger hordes of zombies. If you kill too many zombies near your base, corpse sickness can really become a problem. I just needed to get rid of a few of the bodies as I didn't want to end up getting sick. Setting up the rest of the fence was my next objective and I almost got caught lacking when I was putting all the planks on the ground. Sometimes I never understand where these zombies come from. These three just came out of nowhere.
I didn't end up finishing the fence as my guy was super tired and I didn't want to risk being outside any longer. Day 12 was just push-ups and burpees. Day 13, I grabbed my shotgun, got ready to head into town as I wanted to level up my firearm skill and we needed some garbage bags so that we could make a rain catcher. I found a secluded horde of zombies that I could actually kill and start leveling up my firearm skill. If you'll notice, I bashed one of the zombies with my gun. That happens to be a mod that you can balance out to make it not be so overpowered. It will damage your weapon. This is sped up, so it does look like I hit them really fast, but it's pretty balanced. During my travels, I happened to stumble across a survivor home. This might be huge, as I do need shotgun ammo so that I can keep leveling up my firearm. Unfortunately, we didn't get any shotgun ammo, but we did find a machete, one of my favorite weapons in the game, and we found a breaching tool, which acts as a sledgehammer. Some of the best luck that I've ever had in this game, I found another survivor home directly behind the one that I just looted. Even though we found a second survivor home, we didn't happen to find any weapons that were really of any use. Fourteen days into this pandemic, I decided to go further into West Point, hit up the police station, try to find some garbage bags and some shotgun ammo. You'll notice that I'm crouching almost all of the time. That's because I'm trying to level up some of my skills, and the easiest way to do it is to just be crouching everywhere. made it to the police station with very little contact to the infected so I went in through one of the side windows just to be safe with a near-death experience I realized why all the zombies were hidden they were locked inside the locker room. I ejecto cedoed out of that place because I knew there were way too many zombies in there for me to take right now. I took a moment over in this construction area to gather myself, get ready to head on to the new area. And the new area that I was going to hit up was the gun store. Now that's what I'm talking about. Shotguns assault rifles, a couple of handguns, and most importantly, some shotgun ammo. I ended up grabbing a 45 shotgun ammo and another shotgun. First car that I checked, an Impala happened to have the key in it and some gas. Time to head back home. The rest of the day would be spent organizing and I decided to cut that out of the video. On day 15, we got a surprise snowstorm, so I stocked up the fireplace just in case it lasted a long time, made some rain collectors, and then headed into town to check the police station. Upon arrival, there weren't very many zombies around as I dragged them out earlier. 
So it was pretty easy to get into the gun area. After finding some shotgun ammo and some handgun ammo, I decided to go out and level up my firearm skill, even though it was negative 70 out. shotguns is no matter what if you panic you can still kill zombies On day 16, I started off by going to the high school to try to find some books and a generator magazine as I have not found one yet. And I would really like to have a generator before winter hits. With no luck of finding a generator magazine, I grabbed what I could and headed on out. I made the mistake of firing a weapon inside of a house not too far from the school. After getting super lucky being able to jump out the window, we headed home and that would be the end of day 16. Day 17, all we did was patch up our clothing, add some extra protection, and we filled up the antique oven. Not too much happened. On the 19th day, I decided to level up my carpentry a little further by expanding my garage. Eventually, I would knock out the back wall to the main garage, but for now, we just got the main walls up. Although I would not get to the end of this garage build today, I decided to go out and find some storage units to put in the garage. I decided to make a change today and start leveling up my metalworking. And there's never a better way to do that than to come disassemble some lockers at the school. With it getting late, we loaded up the vehicle that we had, and then headed further into town to find somewhere to sleep for the night. With the amount of tedious carpentry and metalworking I've been doing, I got the urge to go around and kill some stuff, so that's what I did. And I ended up finding a decent house.
This house was amazing because it had a backpack that I could upgrade and a stretcher bed. Two things that I really needed. The Alice backpack from Authentic Z's mod lets you put the flashlight on your back and along with other things such as a water bottle. At this point my inventory is full so it was time to head back to the vehicle and go home. So it's time to go inside as I'm about to become hypothermic and I was not looking to die today. I spent the next few days reading some books, exercising to get my fitness up, and organizing the base. My OBS ended up going down for a little while so I lost about 4 days of footage. And I did find a generator magazine during that time. I went into town just to get some more looting done and I ran into an entire horde of zombies. I quickly pulled over and headed into a side store so that I could lose the zombies. Since I was badly injured, I decided to go upstairs, break the wall with the new breaching hammer that I got. That way I could set up a new water pipe system so that my sink could have actual water once it started snowing. The last thing that I wanted to get done today was to find a generator. I had marked one earlier in the playthrough, so I went and grabbed that one. You could probably get away without running a generator in cryogenic winter, as you could just leave your food outside and it would freeze, but I like having power, so we went and grabbed it. Day 29 was only about fitness and organizing, but on day 30 something had happened that I have never seen before with this expanded helicopter event, and it was huge. Seeing this notification, I knew I was going to need my shotgun, so I grabbed it as quickly as I could, make sure I wouldn't lose where the airdrop was coming down, and I headed out. I had expected to see some zombies, but I did not expect to see as many as I did right here. This is where I learned how good spears actually are. I've never used spears in my past playthroughs, but I might in the future playthroughs as I didn't know they were this good. I had completely ran out of shotgun ammo, so the best course of action was to drag the zombies away so that I could use the supply crate. I don't know what I expected from the supply crates, 
but I was not expecting what I found. This was the very first airdrop I'd ever gotten with the expanded helicopter mod, so it was a pretty good find. It took 30 days to come in, so I think it's pretty balanced, but we'll have to wait and see if I find another one. Heading back into the center of West Point, I wanted to grab the rifle suppressor as I knew I was going to be making a trip out of town soon, and that rifle suppressor would definitely come in handy. The other two items that we're looking for on this run are cigarettes, as I'm down to my last few, and a treadmill. With that in mind, the first thing that came to mind was the gas station, so that's where I went first. I've been getting pretty lucky not to run into too many hordes. I ran into one earlier in the week, but we've had some pretty good luck so far. Let's hope that keeps up. For those of you that don't recognize this area, this is part of the West Point expansion. There may be an add-on for the map to see the buildings and stuff on your mini-map. I do not know, as I don't have one. I happen to find my treadmill here. I had quite a bit of food stocked up and I knew I wanted to level up my fitness and it took a lot longer than I thought it was going to with the treadmill, but it was quicker than doing push-ups or setups. It took about 10 full days for me to level this up at just one level. It was now day 43 and I was a little low on food and we needed some more warm clothing, such as new boots, so I decided to go further into town at the heart of all the zombies, because that's where most of the loot was left as I've looted most of the small houses. To my surprise, I did find one of the items that I was looking for, but for the most part I was looking for padded clothing and food, and I was having no luck in the padded clothing department. On the next playthrough, I think I'm going to spend the first week probably leveling up one specific melee skill as it was taking way too long for me to kill one or two zombies and I was getting trapped quite often. Finally clearing out the zombies that were chasing me, we got back in the car and decided to move on as there were no warm clothing in that building. I had a big decision to make, either to go to Louisville or to go to the town directly below West Point. So I decided to head over and grab some 9mm ammo and some 762 from the gun store. That would have been the worst way to end a playthrough right there, but luckily, we didn't die. It was time to head home, get ready for the big trip to the new town. And we decided to go to Madro. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but that's the town that we're going to be headed to. We decided to put the campfire kit and the tent in the back of the trunk of our vehicle, and we were almost ready to go for tomorrow. And now we're off. The thing is, no Project Zomboid playthrough is set without smashing into a tree and obliterating your windshield. 
because our windshield got obliterated by that tree, we really needed to hurry up and get to the town as the temperature in the vehicle was going to plummet. Because of the windshield breaking, I took two days on the side of the road to rest up and place my campfire down and try to get some health back. Finding a hat on this bed was huge because I had lost mine earlier when I tripped and I really needed it to keep my insulation up. With day 45 coming to an end, it was time to rest up in the room next door and begin our day the next day with full stamina and no fatigue. This is also the furthest that I've ever made it in this kind of playthrough. With it getting down to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, I really needed to find padded clothing, so I hit up the next store that I knew where some clothing was. But in typical Project Zomboid fashion, I didn't exactly find what I wanted. expect there to be as many zombies as I saw here because West Point didn't seem to have as many. Maybe that's because I killed a lot of them at the beginning of the game. I'm not quite sure. I was getting a little bit worried about how many zombies I had following me and I should have brought a Molotov but I didn't. So I decided to bring them into the woods because I felt like that'd be the best course of action to be able to lose them. I had lost my car earlier due to crashing it and it was too damaged to keep driving and I happened to find a key on the ground. All I had to do was bring the zombies away from the blue car and then I had a brand new vehicle. I decided it'd be much safer to park the car, leave it somewhere, and come back for it later as I didn't want to damage it too much. And we were going to head to the police station and try to find a couple of guns. And of course, we didn't get very far before attracting just about the entire map of zombies. It took a little while, but I dragged most of the zombies into the woods and headed inside. The only interesting thing we found that really is going to help out is the pistol suppressor. Everything else was kind of subpar. This is where we went to sleep for the night and began the next day. I did decide that it was time to get out of this town as I didn't think I'd survive here much longer with how cold it is and the fact that there's a lot of zombies. I did happen to see a trailer and I thought I could use it. I did hook it up, but it was definitely not the best decision as it does slow you down. But it was time to get out of here and we didn't really make much of this run other than grabbing a pistol suppressor. 
With that being kind of a wasted run, I decided to go inside and drop off the stuff that I did grab on my travels and try to organize a little bit. Day 48, I spent just recuperating because I had gotten super injured on the travels and day 49 was when I went out and leveled up my metalworking a little bit. I decided I wanted to go to Twiggy's as I had a few hours left. I wanted to grab some furniture for my building and we needed some more alcohol for some calories. And that's when things took a turn. Let this be a reminder to you, don't get greedy when you're grabbing materials and items, because it will be the end of you. Thank you for sticking around to the end. If you did, this is one of my first long form content videos, but the editing's not going to be the best. If you have any suggestions, go ahead and drop it below. I saw the horde and I did decide to almost save it by quitting, but I didn't because I felt like that would be cheating. <laughs>